Brilliant. Cheers, Alban. So just a quick introduction into Alban in his background. He's a UEFA A licensed coach. He's been coaching for a number of years. His experiences are quite varied, uh, both the senior and youth level in Sweden. Uh, today he's working for Ostersunds uh, FK um, as an under-19 head coach. And his presentation uh, sounds really intriguing, a tactical analysis of Italy at uh, Euro 2020. So hopefully he's not got too much uh, footage of the of the final. I don't think I could relive that again, but uh, over to you, Alwyn. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for the introduction and for the opportunity to speak here. Uh, it's my first time ever, so I hope I do well. Uh, and I'm glad that Alexei and, uh, could find the opportunity and chance to to find time to to present this uh, presentation. Uh, as you said, I will present uh, one analysis of Italy. And since we don't have as much time, I have focused more on the possession phase and attacking phase of Italy, which is a, a quite complex one, but beautiful to watch. Uh, so as you said, some information about me, Albin Shekiri is that I'm an UEFA advanced and elite youth uh, licensed coach. I am under 19 head coach of Östersund's FK uh, at the moment, where I work as uh, full-time. And uh, I have worked in uh, senior level pro level in Sweden before in a Gothenburg based team called guys. That's, that's a quick introduction about me. And to speak about Italy, we have to first speak about some phases of the game. So Italy, they, you can, you can say without possession, it's more of a three, four, three, three, but I think, I think the future now, the more, the more the game is going, the more you understand that really it's just, it's just it's just numbers. They are they are super dynamical and they are very space oriented and they base they base their their structure their positioning based on the on what the opponent is doing. And I will try to I don't have all the answers, but I will try to make it as as concrete as possible for you so that you can understand. But basically, so when they have the ball, they switch to a three one. Uh, Two-four system, or you can call it three-four-three, three, or where, where if you can see my mouse, where for example Verratti at some at some games, depending on if Jorginho is blocked, he they play a double uh, double six system. But what they always want, and I will show you this after, is that they always want three-one or three-two, and they always maintain players numerical advantage centrally and full width it can be in senior if Spinozola if they are pressing higher then Spinozola is a bit deeper but the more they take the ball inside the the middle third it's more Spinozola that is uh, the one responsible or uh, Emerson as you will see some um, some games uh, game video example with him but basically, why, why do they always maintain width in order to, to, to open up the central spaces much more? I have written some, some, uh, some points with, which I find interesting in, in both these sides. So in order to st structureize it as easy as possible, the first, the first thing is that, is that they always structure it in three, one, or three, two. And I will show you this. So the first thing is, as I said, they are looking for progression and verticality, that they can break lines. But in order to, to, to uh, find these uh, opportunities, they need depth and width in both directions, in depth. So I call this positioning is the most important first off. And what they can do is they, they always, I will see, they, they don't rush if they don't have this structure. They want to attract pressure. They want to circulate uh, uh, possession in order to attract the pressure and then and then find in 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 their way this superiority central superiority they want to find a free player so they want to attract pressure and the pressure doesn't just need to be from these three together with Jorginho or Verratti for example the attraction can always also be 
in, in wide areas. So they attract one team in, in these zones and then they uh, try to attack on the other uh, zone, which I will show you. For example, the Borfall uh, house space. But what they create in the first phase here is that they create a, a, a numerical superiority, either with Jorginho, so it's, it's, you will see examples, it's either three against one, uh, three plus one, sorry, or three plus two. And then for the penetration phase, I call this first phase, it's a progression. They either progress via central zones or uh, outside. If they attract pressure uh, or they attract with their positioning, they lure the opponent to be central compact, then they pro progress outside of it uh, and vice versa, which I will show you. It's, it's, it's kind of a mix of if, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Sasulu's positional play, which is more a bit more strict with Atalantas, where they almost play in a U circulation, but it's a circulation to attract pressure. And then in central zones, they try to take advantage of the numerical superiority. And I will show you how they do that. Uh, and that is where they try to find penetration from these areas. So position full width in order to occupy opposition fullback, so they cannot succeed with pressing uh, traps and to open up uh, central spaces further. Okay, and they have diagonality and verticality and they follow up actions with third man combinations really, really well. In that case, they are really dynamical. So. These are just basically what I told you now, some of the collective principles. As I say, it's not fixed. Uh, they, they move quite flexibly. I guess I can now finish this and show you videos. So we spoke about outside, inside, triangle rotations. We saw Berardi and, and Barella. Players are able to interchange positions based on opposition this decision uh, in defending, but do always keep structure and the idea of play. So that means, for example, Barella has no issues in dropping wide, but then, then Berardi, for example, uh, uh, takes the half space uh, positioning and vice versa. So overload that can be created in, uh, we talk about numerical advantage centrally, but they, they can also overload teams and attract on, on half spaces and wide zones in order to find the uh, uh, other half space or uh, ball, far, ball far side. So against, against Belgium, against Belgium is the same base structure, three, four, two, one, a symmetric, Maximum two players in the same vertical line, occupy all channels. We have players occupying fullbacks. We have the three, three versus three plus one. We have the numerical advantage. Either, uh, either it's a false nine movement, and they drag the uh, sixes out of position, and then find this diagonal ball to the striker, who then can connect to the half spaces or via an inverted winger of Insigne, the box midfield as I, as I uh, showed you before. What was interesting against Belgium is that the eights, and this is how they uh, adapt towards the opponent, which makes them very flexible, is how the eights dropped wider in order to, to drag the midfielders of Belgium out of position. Uh, and, and, uh, and decrease the compactness horizontally of Belgium, especially the second line, which, which draw them out of positioning totally. And they could find uh, via switching back uh, the half or switch to, to uh, full width, find this player in half space here. And it's exactly from this kind of situation, which in Signe scores. So they don't have, you cannot say that Italy has strict way to play but it's 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 quite it's quite uh, different different situations occurs so here is just a way to show how we sing that can uh, locate these uh, 
free space in central areas. So when, when does the aid move or why does the aid move? If the central superiority is not accessible, then move outside of the structure. So it becomes like a U circulation in order to open up the inside. Play outside the structure in order to open up the inside. And now I will show you some sequences of this against Belgium. I had some same I will show you now against England. Because here is, the, is, is a very interesting concept, which I uh, found was very interesting, which reminded me a lot of Atalanta, which they, uh, I think they used more extremely. And I, I am, you, you are never sure in, in principles, you're never sure in, in concepts totally if you, if you don't talk to the coach directly yourself. But you can see, you can see some similarities or at least inspiration from Atalanta because they, Atalanta plays a lot of U circulation uh, uh, movements in the first in the first phase when they have possession, uh, and for me, I think this is a way to lure to lure opponents to press. So if you if you have players standing here between them, they have access to to press you. And I will show you examples of this uh, by Italy, Italy, uh, by England, how they press Italy, and Italy succeeds, but. I feel, I feel maybe it's not totally important, but they, it gave Italy more, a, a better, a better counter pressing and a better, uh, better way to keep possession basically. So they tried the same thing against England, but England was better in dropping uh, deep and controlling the house spaces with the two sixes. So it was quite the same against England. England also played a 5-2-3 or 5-4-1. You can see the structure here, 3-1 of Italy, the full width. And this is the solution of England. So what Italy changed, and I will show you examples of it, was what Italy changed in the second half. And I think I must, talk a little bit faster now to show you these examples, is that instead of having one six, which Kane could control easier and have the Verati dropping wider, they created a way where they can, where they can progress past the first line much more easy and have both Jorginho and Verati in better positions to, to play from central areas. So I will show you what they did. And this, this solution that they dropped deeper, almost to the sides of, of Kane, it, it, I will show you how it, how it looks like an U circulation. And in this way, England could never really create good enough access towards Italy. Because if he was pressed, then they have inside option, outside, they have two against one against the winger. If they progress past Kane with one eight and one of the sixes here, then he can just run, uh, take the ball inside and, 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 uh, and dribble the space in front of him and attract pressure from the, from the central midfielders and then play penetration passes between them. But you can see that it basically, it basically looks like an U structure, which is very Atalanta uh, inspired, if you ask me. So position outside, with numerical advantage or equality, they are the same as them, but it is to attract the pressure of England so that this space behind is more open. This, these are some, some of the points which, I, which caught my in interest. And uh, with these videos and this presentation, I would like to say that I am finished and Thank you a lot for your interest and opportunity to share my presentation with you guys. Thank you, Alban. Uh, interesting stuff. I it was a really detailed overview, Alban. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Uh, much appreciated. I'm sure if anyone had any more questions, I could put that in the chat. But uh, thanks for a, a good overview with lots of video in there uh, and some good interpretation of that video. So thank you very much. Thank you.